Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a dining room makeover back here and we are going to do it on a zero dollar budget or very, very close to that. And I'll tell you how we're doing it. So basically over the last several months, probably three months, I have been shopping on Facebook Marketplace, scouring it, searching for the perfect pieces, and I finally found a table late last night. We went and picked it up, and so we are going to go ahead and flip those pieces today, and we are going to like completely transform the feel of our dining room for next to nothing. So this table right here, it was actually custom built for us, but we got like a crazy good deal. I think we paid like $250 for the table and the bench, but we got it back when we lived in Georgia. So Liam is like nine years old now and this was back when he was a baby. So we've had it for a very long time and it does still function, but obviously our style has changed ever since getting the table. And so it's kind of slowly been not matching everything. And then especially since doing our kitchen renovation recently, I feel like the dining room just feels very out of place. Like the dining table, it just doesn't fit everything. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. We are going to swap out our farmhouse style dining table and chairs. And we're also going to not be having the bench anymore. And I am going to take you guys out into the garage, show you what pieces we have and kind of tell you what my plan is for it. But you guys are going to be amazed. I haven't seen it yet, obviously, how it's gonna turn out, but I know in my mind and I know it's just gonna turn out amazing. So let's go out there and I'll show you what we're doing. I wanna hear you say it. All right, so this is the table and chairs that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I did get them separate. That's why they totally don't match like the finishes or anything. I was really picky when I was looking and I made sure to stay in budget. So I got all six of these chairs, which they are really nice quality chairs. I got all six of them for $100. And I got this table for $100 too. So all in, I am in this $200. We can definitely sell our own table and chairs for $100. So that's where we're going to kind of make up the difference. And the plan with this is to actually paint the chairs black, like a matte black, and I'm going to be using Beyond Paint, of course. I might end up just leaving the table as it is for now. Once I get the chairs painted, I'll see if it matches and looks good in there. If not, I will sand this down and just do like a raw wood look, and I'll probably just put like a poly or a wax on top. I think this is going to totally change the look and feel of our dining room and just make the whole space feel very cohesive because we do have like a very open floor plan. So when you have something that really doesn't match it definitely stands out so here's our starting let's do this So I have the chairs over here. I'm actually gonna start on the bottom, that way that can dry, and then I can just flip them and not have to worry about like the leg getting all brushed up on or anything. So this is what we're going to be using today. This is the same thing that I used on our like bar stool chairs to flip those. So it's called Beyond Paint, and the color I'm using is licorice. It's just like a really pretty like flat black color and it is very, very, very thick when you open it up. So if you haven't ever used it, don't be alarmed. It's extremely thick, but you need to only use like one to two coats usually, and it has really good coverage. It also is self-leveling and very easy to apply. And the biggest thing is like, you don't have to sand anything down first. It can go and adhere to like pretty much any kind of wood, any painted surface, like it is incredible. So let's go ahead and get to painting. Beyond paint, you want to actually roll as much as possible. And so what you're going to do is like in any crevices, 
we are going to take the brush and just stipple it in like just kind of press the brush in that will help by not giving you any brush marks or brush strokes and then everything that you possibly can we are going to roll it which it's awesome because rolling is like a lot faster a lot cleaner but that's what they actually say to do and i've done this on several different projects and it works amazing So I have used Beyond Paint several, several times before. I've used it on kitchen cabinets up in Montana on my mom's like Airbnb apartment. I also have used it in our bathrooms. I've used it on furniture. I have just used it all over the place and it honestly just impresses me every time because like I said, you don't have to sand anything. It just works really good and it looks incredible when you're done. Like it has professional finish to it. And since I've used it so many times, I've obviously shared with you guys whenever we use it. And I've heard from a lot of you guys in comments and messages and things like that, that you have tried it and you've loved it as well. And I love hearing that. I think it's so fun to do these projects and share them together. And as you can see, the first coat is going on really nicely, but here in just a second, you are going to see me change my plan of attack on these chairs and it kind of doesn't go as planned. So I'll kind of chat about that in just a second. I was planning to take the seats off, but I literally cannot get this one off. The reason I was planning to take the seats off is actually because when I did the first one, it was just hard to like get into that crevice. Now you will pretty much almost never see that, but I just wanted to, you know, get in there a little bit better, but I literally cannot get this off. So instead of breaking the chair and ripping it off, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw that back on and paint it as it is i'll probably just like use a brush to really worry about like getting in there deep I am sure that I'm going to forget my feelings on this, but after flipping these Facebook Marketplace chairs in 110 degree weather here in Arizona, I really want to think twice about doing an outdoor summer project again because it was so incredibly hot. And especially in the garage, like thankfully I did have shade and there was ventilation and everything since I just had the whole garage door open, but it was so, so hot. And it definitely made this easy project feel a lot tougher than I'm sure it really was. All right, I have the first coat on all six chairs. Other than the bottom, I'm gonna flip them over so I can get like a good, just like a good angle to get them. This one over here was the first one I did. So that one is done like from top to bottom. But now we're gonna go ahead and flip these over, get the other, the bottom half done. Once that dries, I'll go ahead and start again, like from the first chair and do a second coat. And then we'll go from there and see if I need a third coat. But you can see like the first coat, you know, it's pretty good coverage, but really that's going to kind of set you up almost as like a primer. And then the second coat I'll show you, but it will go on like so, so much thicker and so nice and smooth. But like this first chair that I did is completely dry. And you can see like the finish on that is so nice and smooth. Obviously it still needs another coat, but just the finish is amazing on this stuff. I love it.
As you can see, I am painting the entire chair black from top to bottom, and I really didn't wanna do my typical two-toned look like I did with the sideboard in the dining room and also the bar stools on the kitchen island. I absolutely love that look of like the black base and everything, and then just like a raw wood seat. I think it is so beautiful. So I totally could have gone that route with these, but I really wanted them to feel cohesive, but I felt like if I did like the two-toned chairs, it kind of could have ended up looking a little bit matchy-matchy and I really didn't want that look. And I also just feel like the full-on black chairs looked very, very classic and timeless. So I ended up being so happy that I just went with like classic all black chairs. You guys will have to let me know what you think towards the end once you kind of see everything put together, but I love this look. so hot out here. Uh, I love Arizona summers, but I don't love doing projects during Arizona summers. So anyway, we have the first coat on everything and I actually went through when I laid the chair or put the chairs back on the ground, I actually went through and did one extra coat on the seat because I really want to make sure that the seat is like has good coverage because obviously that's going to be like used the most and get the most wear and tear. But now we have the first coat and on the first chair, like it's fully dry. So I'm ready to go ahead and put the second coat on the entire chair and continue on with all the rest. And then I think the third coat, I either won't do any or I'll just do like touch-ups. That's typically what I've done in the past, but we're getting there. Okay, I hope you can tell how amazing that second coat looks. It looks amazing. It's just incredible to see what a second coat does for these chairs. It goes on so super smooth and really, really great coverage. And also I did want to mention the way I'm doing these chairs is not typically how I would do this. Like typically I would do one entire chair and then move on to the next, but it actually worked out so, so well doing all of the tops and then going through and doing all of the bottoms of each chair separately because what I was doing is I would just start with chair number one, I would do the top, put it down, let it dry, work on chair number two's top, work on chair number three's top and so on and so forth. And that really gave it time for the top to completely dry. And then I was able to flip it upside down and start painting the bottoms like chair number one, two, three, and four. And it just made the whole process go super smooth. The chairs are all painted. It feels so good to get back in the air conditioning, but we are ready to replace the table and chairs in here. So I do want to bring the table in as it is and just see what it looks like before going ahead and sanding it down. The other option will be to like sand it down um, to like raw wood, put a poly on it or something. And I think that's probably most likely what we're gonna do, but I just wanna test it out first. And the chairs are already dry thanks to our 103 degree weather here in Phoenix. So Kyle is here. We're gonna go ahead and grab the table, swap this one out and see the transformation.
It's always a bit of a process to figure out where to place furniture in this house because absolutely nothing is symmetrical. Not the window, not the light fixture, the kitchen island doesn't line up. It just kind of ends up being a thing where we just kind of have to move things around until it looks right because putting it in the actual center would totally not match up with anything at all. Right, we have the table and chairs in here and I think I love them. A few different thoughts about sanding this down to basically raw wood and matching these. One, it's always a risk because you never exactly know what you're gonna find underneath when you start sanding. But the biggest reason that I was debating it is actually that like we have our chairs on the island, our the raw wood on top and then black. We have that little, it's actually just a dresser, but I'm using it as a sideboard that's raw wood and black. And so if you have the raw wood color on the table in black, yes, it would match, but I'm wondering if it would be like too matchy matchy kind of thing. Whereas this, it's still like a more modern wood tone, but it kind of like pulls in a little bit of depth there. And I just think it actually looks really nice. So you guys will have to let me know, do you think that we should sand it down and go to raw wood on the table? Or do you like how it is now? It won't hurt my feelings either way. I'm still like kind of undecided, but I think for today we're gonna leave it and kind of let it be for a little bit and kind of see what we think. And then of course I'll take your guys' ideas and thoughts into consideration because you guys have a lot of good ideas. So I'm gonna turn you around, show you guys exactly like some up closes of like what it's really looking like. And then we will decorate it a little bit and get it feeling really nice and homey. Alright you guys, here it is. This to me totally elevates the space and it doesn't feel farmhouse anymore. It just flows seamlessly with the kitchen and once we sell our old table and chairs, this project will end up costing us nothing. Zero dollars because I just used supplies that I already had and then of course I got these pieces on such a great price that I can definitely sell our table and chair set for at least $200, which is what I've spent so far and that will leave our grand total for this project at zero dollars. So I absolutely love projects like this. It just goes to show you can have a tiny budget, a quick time frame, and still a huge impact. But let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. It is the day after the next day. It's like a couple days later, but last night we had our first dinner on the dining table and it worked really great. It's definitely like a different setup having the chairs all facing each other and not having like anyone on the edges. It does just like totally fit the space so much better. And I'm thinking we are probably gonna keep the wood. I don't know, but still let me know what you guys think about it. Cause I'm just like, I'm just not 100% sure on it yet. Also, I'm thinking to like try to change this out to make it a rectangle one to match the table. However, nothing in basically our entire house is <laughs> like symmetrical. Like the fireplace is not symmetrical. Like it's obviously shifted over to the right. The window over here is also not symmetrical. Like see how it shifted over to the left. It doesn't actually match up with the island. The light in the room, I think is mostly, I think the light is actually pretty um, like symmetrical that way, but it's not symmetrical this way. Like it's not in the middle of the room that way. So I don't know, it like doesn't always line up with everything. So Kyle was like, maybe it'll end up kind of making that more obvious if it's a rectangle, but I don't know. Let me know your guys' thoughts on it. But anyway, so, we are going to add one more thing here and it's kind of like random. 
<laughs> like I've not seen this be a thing, but this tree, I've like really liked this tree. However, I need to actually like fix the base because it just like always is tipping around, falling over. And I was at a thrift store, well, like a consignment shop the other day and I saw they're like the saguaro skeletons. They look so cool. And this lady was like really wanting to get rid of it. And she gave us in like a crazy deal, pretty much half off of it. And so I wanted one for a really long time and I haven't seen them in person though. And so whenever we found that, I was like, okay, I know exactly where I'm gonna put it. And I wanna put it right there where the tree is. So Kyle and I are gonna move this saguaro skeleton over there and I hope it fits really nicely, but we shall see. I love this so much, but I kind of feel like I'm missing some greenery from losing that tree. And we've actually thought about putting some plants maybe around the base, maybe hanging like a plant set on the pillar to the right of the cactus. I don't know. Let me know any ideas you might have, but I'm definitely loving the cactus skeleton in here. Also, I did want to let you know this Monday we will be deep cleaning with the most satisfying cleaning ever. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that one. And also I'm getting ready to plan videos for August. So I do know the pink bathroom makeover is coming early August, but what else would you like to see this month? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I cannot wait to see you in Monday's video. And just a reminder, I'm hosting on Monday and Thursdays now, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.